Okay, Isaiah chapter 40. No, Isaiah chapter 44. I'll start from 7 to 9. And, well, I'll start before that, actually. I'll start from 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. This is Jesus Christ in the book of Isaiah. Just like He said in the uh, book of Revelation, I'm the Alpha and I am the Omega. Okay, right here. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. And who can proclaim as I do, then let him declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, speaking of the Jews, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show those of them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. I Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Those who make an image, all of them are useless. And their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witness. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. You see what God is saying here? That he has declared it. Even if you go to here. Right here. Isaiah chapter 46. I'll start from verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God. And there is no other. I am God. And there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. And if you go to Isaiah chapter, was it 45 verse 8? No, sorry, it's 48 verse 5. 48 verse 5. Yeah. Where is it? 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Verse 5. Listen to this. Even from the beginning, I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you. Lest you should say, my idols have done them. And my greater image and my mobile image have commended them. So God is saying, I'm going to tell you the future before it happens. And this is the reason why. is so that you cannot say that your image is told you. But there's many other reasons. Bible prophecy is God proving that he is who he says he is. The words that he says have come to pass. And then if you go to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Listen to this. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. I tell you of them. How do we know if what a prophet says is true? Or how do we know if a prophet is really sent by God? I want you to go to Deuteronomy. I believe it's in Deuteronomy chapter 18. I think verse 20. I'm not sure. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Or is it 810? Let me see. Deuteronomy chapter 18. But the prophet who promote to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know that the word which the Lord has not spoken, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken in permanent, you shall not be afraid of him. Every word of God has come to pass, people. And it's happening. God says, I'm going to tell you the future before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. You can read that in John chapter 14, verse 29, where Jesus says, I tell you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. And if you go to John 13, verse 19, he says it again. I tell you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am he. 
and guess what? God predicts the future with so much, what's it called, precision. Like right on target to exact detail. 100% all of the time. All of the time. 100%. Not just five times or 20 or 100 times, but thousands of times with accuracy. He shows that he's the only God. He doesn't know any other God. There's none beside me. I know of none. Because God is the only true God. He shows that he's the only true God. He predicts the future before it happens. But this is what I wanted to get into. So, this is what I want to say. Yeah. Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Okay, I wanna I wanted to get into this before we come to a close here. Right here, listen to this. I'm gonna explain it. We'll start from fifteen, okay? Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those okay, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his cloak. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. And it goes on. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor, nor ever shall be. Jesus is actually telling you when the tribulation is going to start. When you see the abominations of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. The holy place is Jerusalem. It's talking about the temple. Okay? It's talking about the temple because if you guys go listen to my other video, the whole world will be under a one world religion. I explain it. The abomination of desolation is the image. Because the, the false prophet is going to demand everybody to create an image. And they're going to have to worship it. And that's an abomination. And, and the Jews are going to come to a realization. Because that's violating one of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not create yourself in any greater images. You name it. And that's what they're going to do. So Jesus is saying, when you see the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, which is the temple... Jesus spoke about the temple. Paul spoke about it. John spoke about it. That's in the book of Revelation. But anyways, I want to get into something else here. Jesus actually pinpoints his return. He actually tells you when he's going to come back. I want to read this right here. Therefore, if they say... I'm going to interpret this, okay? Let's hold on. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Talking about the Messiah, the Messiah is in the desert, he's over this, he's in this city, he's in that city. Jesus is saying, don't believe it. Then he goes on. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. His return will be visible. Just as you see lightning flash in the sky... That's how visible my return will be. Everyone's going to know when I return. Believe me. That's what he's saying, okay? And then it goes on. For whenever the... Okay, wait. Verse 29. I want to start from verse 29. This, he actually pinpoints when he's going to return. Here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the... Uh, powers of the heavens will be shaken then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and it goes on he tells you exactly when he's going to return right there on target immediately after the tribulation of those days Daniel 9:27. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The word week there in Hebrew is Shabuah, which means seven years. So you'll know the exact day. Jesus said it. Clear as can be. 
And he's going to return at the end of the war, in the middle of the Battle of Armageddon. So you will know immediately when you see the sun starting to get dark. That's the sign. He's coming. He's coming. The sun, the stars are falling. Now, boom, Jesus is there. You will know exactly. And the reason why I'm talking like this is because many people say, oh, the church, the church is going, no, it's not going through the tribulation, okay? These people are extortioners. They're imposters. They're liars, okay? Believe what is written. Just believe what is, and plus nobody knows the day or the hour. But, listen, nobody knows the day or the hour to the rapture, but you will know the exact day and hour to the second coming at the signing of the peace treaty. Seven years, boom, Christ returns. But I want to get into this. It's in uh, Zechariah. If you can, go to Zechariah, chapter 14, verse Start from verse 5. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to as the... Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Azar, king of Judea. I don't know how to say the guy's name. Then it says here, Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. All the saints. This is not talking about the end of the tribulation period. Where they're trying to say you go up and down. This is talking about the second coming, yes. This is talking about the end of the tribulation period. But this is not talking about a post-tribulation. This is a bunch of bull. This is talking about the second coming. The second coming and the rapture are two separate events. You people need to study prophecy and understand your Bible. I'm going to say it as it is. I, I don't care what you guys think. You guys need to get Holy Spirit filled and understand your Bibles. Just think about this. Just think about this for a minute. Okay? There's no translation at the end. If that was the case, that means you go up and down. Just like a yo-yo. Up and down. Like an elevator. Therefore, you have an incorruptible body. Right? Right. You go up and down. You have an incorruptible body. Therefore, there's no reason for Jesus to separate the sheep from the goats. Because the sheep would have got taken up with them. Therefore, they have an incorruptible body, and there's only the wicked standing there. And when Jesus, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There would be no reason whatsoever. Therefore, you cannot uh, populate the 1,000 ring millennial kingdom. Because those people that get saved during the tribulation period, some of them are still going to be... Uh, some people are going to survive the tribulation period without taking the mark of the beast. I don't know how it's going to happen, but they're going to do it. They're going to stand before Jesus. And that's when he says, Come, you inherit, you are blessed. Enter the kingdom prepared for my Father. You blessed of my Father. And inherit the kingdom which was prepared for you. These people still have natural bodies and they are going to populate heaven. Okay? They are going to... Sorry. <laughs> they are going to populate the thousand ray millennial kingdom. Because children are still going to be born... Because after Jesus says in Zechariah about his 1,000 year reign, millennial kingdom, that those nations that don't come up to worship the king, he's going to send plagues to fall on their uh, country. <clears throat> and plus Satan after the 1,000 year reign too. Suppose if that was true, if the wicked were. It's because these children that grow up, they're rebellious. They want nothing to do with God, some of them. Because how in the world can Satan gather more people than there is on the sand of the seashore if there would have been a rapture at this which is not it's the second coming but suppose if it did happen you go up and down therefore only the righteous there you can't have sex because you have a resurrected body therefore satan can't gather more people than there's in the sands of the seashore just the fact that the bible states that he does shows that there was a rapture that took place and the bible is clear i can't get it you guys can go listen to my other messages okay about the rapture and everything like i can go on ladies and gentlemen i gotta make another video that's what i'm gonna do because I want to, I'm going to start, okay, I'm going to listen, whoever's listening to this, if you want to see the next video, i got to make it. Because I want to explain stuff that would make no sense. People need to understand their Bibles, man. It really breaks my heart that they don't know nothing. They're like ostriches with their heads in the sand, not knowing a thing. But anyways, this is all i got to say, ladies and gentlemen. Do your research and pray for God to give you discernment on Bible prophecy and stuff. Just don't listen to these phonies and these false teachers. 
So this is all I got to say. So for my brothers and sisters in Christ, be ready. The Lord is coming. Jesus is about to break through the clouds to call his church on. God bless.